Stevie, the last time Liverpool played, there was some discussion as to whether the better team <laughs> actually won. Did the better team win today? Well, not according to Roy Hodgson, but I'm scared to say anything good because Mr. Bully over there is going to start crying Liverpool TV again. I mean, what what can you say? You talk about the perfect performance, uh, creating loads of chances, scoring loads of goals, keeping a clean sheet, uh, completely dominating the game. I mean, it's it's just amazing. 7-0 away at... Listen, this, this wasn't against a team that are flat bottom of the league and struggling big time. This is a team who who can be dangerous to anybody. And so the fact that they wiped the floor with them, uh, I mean, just, just outstanding. And uh, a perfect game, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Craig, that's a good point. Uh, this Palace team seven days ago held Spurs. Uh, and, and here, 7 nothing against Liverpool. If that's the gap between one and two, I know Spurs have dropped now, but yikes. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have a discussion about who was the best team. We had a discussion about what Mourinho said, uh, which none of us none of us agreed with. I don't think anybody uh, thinks Tottenham are or were a better team than Liverpool on that occasion. We we sort of discussed, not argued. I would say we discussed the chances that Tottenham had. But but you know, this was a, another marker down from from Liverpool. Uh, this was the Liverpool that we've known uh, over the last 24 months. We've seen them along with others this season, just stagger along like the Fulham away game. And there, there has been many on the road where they haven't travelled well, Brighton away. But this was the real Liverpool. This was clinical. It was ruthless. It was once you get your, your opponent down, you keep them down and you keep pummeling away. And there was none of this, well, it's five or six, we'll take our foot off the gas because it's getting a bit embarrassing for Crystal Palace. If Liverpool could have had 10 today, they would have taken 10. Mm. And I think they cemented their place clearly as the favourites for this Premier League and sent a message out to, to those that are capable potentially of catching that that's the standard you're going to have to get to if you're going to take that title away from us. Stevie, it's the best Liverpool has looked since? Oh, no question. Since when? No quite. Since probably the, the restart. Hmm. I mean, have they had a better performance since since the pandemic kicked in, what, eight months ago? And then we had the stoppage and then we had the restart. Have they had? A, I don't think they've had a better performance from start to finish. Hmm. Uh, they may have played as well, but they maybe haven't scored as many goals. They may have played as well, but let a goal in. Uh, they maybe have looked, as well as they've played in certain games, looked vulnerable. You know, Craig's talking about a couple of chances that Spurs had. You know, so... As good as they played in that game, they still gave up some chances. And this game, you can't say that. This mm. this was, as I said, the perfect game. Uh, Craig, it's interesting. We hear a lot of talk about like Chelsea having the deepest, best squad in the league. Liverpool was in an injury crisis, and they're rolling right along. You know, they got the young guys, Curtis Jones, Reese Williams, performing midweek. Today, it's Minamino. I mean, this team is as deep as anybody, aren't they? Well, Chelsea have got a deep squad, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the best squad. And, and, you know, clearly there was reinforcements in the summer for Frank Lampard. We know that. He was heavily backed. We also know Liverpool have had a barrage of injuries, and that's resulted in Jurgen Klopp. Uh, you know, I've called it whinging, but he's whatever you want to call it, he's been moaning about games, about fixtures, about substitutes and all that. And so you kind of thought it was transmitting through to the players a little bit, but, but that was all sort of put to bed today. And, and yeah, I think the key is that some younger guys have got game time, uh, particularly Curtis Jones in the middle of the park, who, who has uh, flourished in the last two or three months. There's no doubt about that. I know he, he, he came off the bench today, but he's shown that he can come in and there are others. Uh, and so uh, when Liverpool lost the title, when Liverpool not lost the title, but just come up a bit short against Man City a couple of years ago, you looked at the bench and you thought, right, the starting 11 is excellent, but it does need reinforcements on the bench. And they got that. They got that, and that got them over the line last year. And they're going to have to utilise it all this year again because of the pandemic, because of the injuries. And he's got players who can give game time, like Minamino today, and there are, there are others that you have mentioned. So... Things are looking rosy for them. But but listen, there's going to be a lot of bumps and humps before the end of the season. There's no doubt about that. There's a really thick, heavy Christmas and New Year period coming up, barring any uh, potential postponements because of the uh, announcements and 
in London today with, in regards to the pandemic. We'll see what happens there. Who knows if these fixtures will all take place. But if they do, it's going to come thick and fast. And that's going to be another test of, of all these squads that are challenging for, for the Premier League title and at the other end, battling against relegation. Stevie, a quick word on Firmino, getting a lot of criticism this season when the goals don't come. He gets two today. The second was a great finish, but for my money, man, I loved the first because he started it and ended it. You know, you always hear us talking about confidence and, and some people say, well, what's this confidence nonsense? Well, in the last couple of weeks, you've seen a guy in Firmino who, who at home, we were kind of sniggering because he was missing chance after chance, but Liverpool was still getting results. And he looked as though he was lacking confidence. The way he was finishing was there was just there was no commitment in it whatsoever. In the space of two weeks, you see what this guy's all about. I mean, the little dink over the goalkeeper is is just it's just incredible. You talk about composure, you talk about touch, you talk about intelligence, you talk about the timing of the chip. But he made it look so easy. And and that's the key. When you're confident. When you're playing football and your confidence is sky high, everything just comes naturally to you. You think straight. Your passes hit the mark with the right pace, with the right weight. And that's what you saw today from Firmino, a guy who, in the space of a couple of weeks, has gone particularly in front of goal to being nervous to a guy who's absolutely at the top of his game. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.